Hello, my name is Mario. Welcome to another video. In today's episode, I will be sharing with you another tip for building microservices in Go, specifically caching using Redis. And we're going to be using the package called Go Redis Redis. So what exactly are we going to be doing this time? We are going to be working on a project that is implementing a, an HTTP server, defining a route, and it's using the IMDB datasets, specifically the names one right here, and is using as a data store PostgreSQL. The table that we're going to be defining doesn't have a primary index, a primary key. That's intentional because we want to try using Redis to demonstrate the caching mechanism that we're going to be implementing. Now, uh, before talking about or showing you the code, re rather, I want to talk about a little bit about Redis and why I like this data store so much. It is a data store that you can use as a cache as a mes message broker because it supports pops up and as a data store uh, as a database i'm sorry and not only that it allows you to it because it, it the way it's implemented it supports a bunch of different data structures that you can use and i want to just mention a few of them like hashes lists sets sorted sets and obviously strings the cool thing about this is that you can actually define or use redis to define data structures and they interact with them uh, through the commands they, that they already find. That might be useful in your use case, but I know it's one of the features that I really do like. Now, not only that, because it's already a really mature project, I've been using it for probably more than 10 years already. It already has built-in replication. It supports scripting using the, the programming language called Lua. It supports LRU eviction and transactions, as well as because of the, it's already mature, and it supports Redis Sentinel, or rather implements Redis Sentinel for high availability. And also if you are planning to shard or partition your data, there is already support for that using Redis cluster. Now, all of this indicates that this is really mature data store and I highly like and I highly recommend, especially for the feature uh, when using Lua, it allows you to do so many things. I'm going to be definitely covering Redis in much more detail in, in future videos. But for now, I just want to Talk a little bit. Lead, uh, talk a little bit about caching using Go. So let's jump into the code to show you how this looks like. The link to all this code is in the description. Feel free to check it out, clone the project, and uh, play with it. It's using what, Go 1.16, and I'm mentioning that because this instruction with uh, the Go install only works in Go 1.16. Uh, the other instructions it doesn't matter, but this is one of the important bit, bits about about that. Now, if you don't know how, how to run Redis using Docker, there is an example right here. Similarly, for Postgres, there is another example right here. Now, because I'm using the IMDB datasets, I'm actually using another tool that I built that I de uh, describe in this blog post uh, for implementing complex pipelines in Go. Feel free to read that as well. Again, the link will be in the description. Uh, and the way we can import the data is using this program and using this command. It takes a while, probably if, depending on your machine, it takes probably five, but less than 10 minutes for sure. Now that everything is run, everything is set up, I already have my docking co Docker containers running. I already imported the data. So everything is supposed to be working nicely on that end. Now, if we go to this command and we run it, we should see the server running in the using the port 8080. Now, because the data we have imported is is coming from IMDB and all of that data represent actors and actresses, uh, I have it right here so you can see it. Uh, it's real. Um, so what we're going to be doing now is we're going to take one ID. Let's say let's take uh, Frank's Frank Sinatra. The ID is this one. It's not the ID. Rather, the value of n const because the way we have implemented our server, which I didn't sh show you yet, um, it's like I told you, there is an endpoint called names that happens to be receiving an ID. And it literally um, tries to get that value from Redis first. If it doesn't exist, it tries to get the value from PostgreSQL. If it doesn't exist, uh, then literally it just fails because there is nothing else. Uh, or rather, it, it won't fail. It will return an empty value. But if it, if it does exist, it will try to cache the value back in Redis to set it. So so the next time you're requesting the same um, actor, actor or actress using that ID, it will literally go to the cache that we uh, define in Redis or the value that we define in Redis. So if we if I want to show you this and we use curl for this one, we use get 
HTTP and then we do 8080 and then we do names and when we do oops I made a mistake right there uh, so we let's cancel this let's go back to the table and to the table database and we run this value we run this command I mean you will notice that it's taking a while and it took a while and if we try it again it, this is when caching kicks in so you notice how fast it is um, the way we implemented this in Redis is that it's literally using the get and the set commands but the the important bit about this is that we are not saving the values as a string rather we are using this package that is included in the standard library called encoding gob and what encoding gob does is takes a, a, a type and it converts that into a slice of bytes which is what we are doing right here the way to use it is similar to to what you use uh, JSON the JSON the encoding JSON or a marshaller and on marshaller right the decoder and decoder uh, are the encoder in this case so it takes those values it converts those it, rather it takes the type that we're trying to decode or encode it does its thing decoding or encoding it returns a slice of bytes and we set that or we get that um, from Redis now for the get it's literally returning the values right here whoop I jump into okay there you go uh, it's getting the byte from the command from the result that we are uh, doing which in this case is a get and we are doing the reader and we were to we are decoding the value and sending that back to the client in the http handler for the set is something similar we do an encoding uh, we use gob we encode it and then we set it using a command called set and if you notice right here i have 25 seconds as my expiration that's why if i try again it will take longer or it will take as much time as i used to take when the caching was not available now i want to show you something uh, so you can see how interesting this is if i run this and hopefully i can run this before 25 seconds uh yeah ready cli and i do a keys command oh it's already there so if i do a get you will see that everything is encoded as a looks like a string but really it's a bunch of uh, bytes that happen to be uh, representing the struct that we previously encoded using gob now because if you remember what is hap what we're doing right here is we're returning a name which is a type that happens to be including the values that we define in the database now this is really cool and i do like uh, redis a lot and i i hope you find this useful and and as usual um please feel free to check out the links in the description um i am also linking a few other previous videos that i sort of cover some of these things but again everything is in the description and, and as usual if you have, have any comments or or questions please just let me know and you know keep it up and don't give up i will talk to you next time take care